my name is Jessica Lumatwaima, and I'm from the village of Hopvela out on the Hopi Reservation. For me, this is an awesome place to be closer to um, our history. Um, and just sometimes I think about um, the people that came up and you know what they were experiencing and what they saw because the very first time I came here it was like oh man so beautiful you know you know was it like that or was it even more dense you know uh, the, the forest and the animals uh, so it's uh, I'm glad to be here just a little bit closer you know even though even though when I'm at home, um, you know, my, my mind comes wandering this way, just to, just, just cause. Being involved with uh, the culture, with the village, you know, there's, um, there's just a lot of meaning, you know, just the colors in my baskets, you know, I used to think, you know, a long time ago that, you know, it's just color, but it's not. There's, there's meaning um, behind everything that we do. Um, like the basket that I'm doing, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege to do this. You have to go through your childhood initiation, then you've earned that privilege to start, you know, certain traditional um, arts and textiles. So it's, it's, all, it's, it's all a learning thing. Everything is learning. I'm still learning. The way I grew up was, um, I grew up with my grandmother and she was really not in, involved because she was one of the, the children that were sent away to school and wasn't allowed to come home till she graduated eighth grade. And her parents had already passed. She had an older sister yet living in uh, Hopvela and another one that moved to the village of Munkapi. And so she ended up moving to Munkapi and just always worked and worked and worked. And yes, we visited. Uh, family at Hope Bella and, and saw dances and stuff, but she, she just wasn't involved. And I was made fun of by, you know, some families and some kids. Oh, don't you know that? Don't you know we do this? And, you know, um, so that's been my my longing desire to, to know the culture. And it wasn't till way later that I had a family that I really became involved, uh, moving back to Hope Bella and just participating and just understanding what everything uh, is. I'm, st I'm still learning, you know, I'm, I'm grateful I know what I know and I try to pass it on to, to my children so that they're, they don't grow up in a sense like I did not knowing, you know, certain things. My name is Leanne Jake Shearer. I'm from the Kaivab Paiute tribe. I'm working on my daughter Ayavi, her um, rabbit blanket. So it just kind of grows with you. And last time I worked on it, she was about five. So, well, the rabbit blanket was the one item that everybody had. And uh, so you didn't have a whole lot of possession that you would take with you, you know? So um, you can imagine if you were, a well, we're a family of five and you're having, you have burden baskets and your whole life has to fit into that burden basket. And that's one item that everybody took with them. So, but you know, you, you can sit on it during, when it's hot like this, you could sit on it, you know, for a nice comfortable spot. You know, um, during the, when it gets cold, you wrap up in it because it is a blanket. Uh, we have um, a bark skirt. It's made out of cliff rose. It's one of our traditional skirts, you know, before the introduction of the Euro-Americans, you know, um, the naked body wasn't a shameful thing, you know, so you would find on really hot summer days, you'd find most people naked, you know, or women just wearing a bark skirt or a buckskin skirt that was stripped and 
that's all you needed. You know, hot and arid out here. You didn't need a whole lot of clothing. With the introduction of the pioneers, that's when the cast off clothing came. Yeah, so, but this is the only rabbit blanket that I know of that you will find outside of a museum. Uh, most people, when they passed away, were buried with the rabbit blankets, so it wasn't something that was handed down. And even today, you know, it's very rare to find uh, rabbit blankets. My family is fortunate enough that my mom has passed that down to us and has taught us, and I'm teaching my girls. In the older so, days, we uh, got the rabbit pelts when we did rabbit drives. And back then, you know, the rabbits were abundant, so. And uh, people were also smaller, too, back then, you know. Not as heavy as we are today, so it didn't take as many rabbit pelts. <laughs> You know, so that, um, I read once that uh, it took about 100 pelts to do an adult size robe. I don't believe that. <laughs> now, this, is, this is going to be about 175, so. Marsha Martin. Uh, in 1993 I was a volunteer and in 93 I started working as a seasonal ranger on the North Rim and I went to a uh, program in Sedona. They were doing a lot about the Native Americans in this area and uh, the government and Park Service was starting to repatriate the um, you know artifacts and, and I thought well it'd be a really great thing to honor the Native Americans who came to the North Rim. It was part of their heritage. It was part of uh, especially the local people. The uh, Paiutes that live near me right now in near Kanab, Utah, in southern Utah and northern Arizona. There is several uh, Paiute uh, reservations. But at any rate, so the first year we invited the Paiutes to come up and um, present some programs about their connection to the North Rim. And it just mushroomed from there. So, <laughs> so eventually after five years, we uh, included all the native tribes around the Grand Canyon. And so it's still going on, I guess, in 2022. And I'm really, really pleased that that's happening, yeah. It's, it's really an honor. Uh, I always felt it was the right time, the right place. Um, not everything always works, you know, but this seemed to hit a, a real nerve and people wanted to know. I mean, we had uh, a lot of different tribes coming and presenting wonderful programs.